Good morning. This is Judge Doar. This is the time I've set to give my trial ruling in Nelson v. Wade. So let me just make sure I have counsel for the parties on the telephone, and then I will issue my ruling. It's probably going to take only about right around 10 minutes, probably. So let's see. For the plaintiff, Mr. Friedrich, are you there? Do I have anyone, counsel for the plaintiff on the line? Yes, Your Honor. Paul Friedrich. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. Lane? Nelson Attorney Alexander Severini. All right. Good morning. Ms. Lane, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. A trial in this adversary proceeding was held before me on September 12, 2023. The oral ruling I'm about to give constitutes my findings of fact and conclusions of law under Federal Rule of Bankruptcy Procedure 7052 and Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 52A. My findings include all of the undisputed facts contained in the agreed pretrial order, which appears at docket number 94. In 2021, William Nelson, who I will refer to as Nelson, obtained a judgment against Houston Wade, who I will refer to as Wade, in a state court lawsuit. That judgment was admitted Exhibit P1, and I will refer to it as the state judgment. Wade filed a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case on May 24, 2022. Wade received a discharge in that case on September 19, 2022. Nelson timely filed this adversary proceeding on August 25, 2022. Nelson seeks to have his claim against Wade established by the state judgment, accepted from discharge, pursuant to 11 U.S.C. Section 523A6. This adversary proceeding is a core proceeding, and this court has jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. Sections 1334, 157A, and 157B2I. The burden of proof for a Section 523A6 claim is on the creditor, here Nelson, and the standard of proof is a preponderance of the evidence. Grogan v. Garner, 498 U.S. 279, 1991. The exceptions to discharge should be strictly construed in order to serve the bankruptcy code's purpose of giving debtors a fresh start. In re Caniva, 550 F. 3rd, 755, 9th Circuit, 2008. Section 523A6 accepts from discharge a debt for willful and malicious injury by the debtor to another person or his property. To prevail on a Section 523A6 claim, the creditor must establish a deliberate or intentional injury, not merely a deliberate or intentional act that leads to injury. Kawaha v. Geiger, 523 U.S. 57, 1998. Negligent or reckless conduct is insufficient. The malicious injury requirement has four elements. One, a wrongful act. Two, done intentionally. Three, which necessarily causes injury. And four, is done without just cause or excuse. In re Ormsby, 591 F. 3rd, 1199, 9th Circuit, 2010. Based on issue preclusion, I granted summary judgment in favor of Nelson on the malicious prong of Section 523A6. The summary judgment order is at docket number 47. The willful injury requirement is met only when the debtor has a subjective motive to inflict injury or when the debtor believes that injury is substantially certain to result from his own conduct. In re Ormsby, the debtor is charged with the knowledge of the natural consequences of his actions and the court may consider circumstantial evidence that tends to establish what the debtor must have actually known 
when taking the injury-producing actions. I denied both the parties' requests for summary judgment on the willful prong of Section 523A6, making it the sole issue for trial. Nelson established by a preponderance of the evidence that Wade subjectively intended to harm Nelson through Wade's posts, which posts the state court in the state judgment found to be false and defamatory. The evidence of Wade's subjective intent to harm Nelson includes all of the following. The state court in the state judgment found that Wade made the posts for the purpose of running Nelson off Bainbridge Island. Wade hates Nelson. In the initial offending post, which is admitted Exhibit D3, Wade advised people to definitely not give Nelson any money. Wade posted in many places, including his personal Facebook page, the Bainbridge Island Bad List, a Facebook page created by Wade, which I will refer to as the Bad List, Twitter, and Real Bainbridge Islanders. Wade posted over an extended period of time, at least several years. Wade made at least one post after the state judgment, which had enjoined him from doing so. That post is at page 37 of admitted Exhibit P2. Although Wade testified he was not aware of the state judgment when he made that post, the context of the post suggests otherwise, given the wording of the question Wade was responding to. Wade posted more prominently about Nelson than any other people on the Bad List, even though Wade posted about other people on the Bad List who had a concrete criminal history like convicted child molester Frank Rowe. Wade posted about his efforts to bankrupt Nelson and took credit and joy in Nelson's bankruptcy. During the lawsuit that resulted in the state judgment, Wade lied about his communications with the prosecutor's office in an effort to get Nelson to pay Wade $50,000 and drop that lawsuit. Wade understood the subject matter of his posts, including allegations of rape, running a child sex ring, and violence against a former spouse and stepchildren would harm Nelson. While any one of these facts taken alone would likely be insufficient, taken together they establish Wade's subjective intent to harm Nelson. Harming Nelson, however, was not Wade's sole intent. Wade believed all or most of what he posted about Nelson and still does. Wade had some reasons to believe what he posted based on information he had reviewed from public records, secondhand information he had read or been told by other members of the Bainbridge Island community, and conduct he had witnessed as a youth. Wade created the bad list to warn members of the Bainbridge Island community about bad men. In general, it appears Wade created the bad list with the intent to warn and protect. But in the specific case of Nelson, Wade also intended to injure and harm Nelson. That concludes my ruling. Judgment is for Nelson. The debt represented by the state judgment is accepted from discharge, and I will prepare and enter a judgment which should be on the docket within the next several days. All right. Thank you. We'll be at recess until 1145. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.